Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly and today I'm going to introduce you to augmented reality using AR Kit. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and launch Xcode. I'm using 11.4.1 but I think you can even use 11 and that's perfectly fine. I'm going to create a new project and you will see that one of the project templates is augmented reality app. So let's go ahead and select that. You have to provide some sort of a name for your augmented reality application. So I'm just going to say intro to AR, that's fine. Language is Swift, that's perfectly fine. Content technology, this means that what kind of a technology framework that I'm going to use to write my AR application. I have Reality Kit, I have Sprite Kit, Metal. I'm just going to select Scene Kit, which is a 3D framework, kind of like if you have played uh, Mario Kart or the new versions of Legend of Zelda, they have that kind of a orthogonal kind of a 3D feel. So Theme Kit is used to create that. You can even use Metal if you want, that's for like hardcore gamers. So you can think of Call of Duty and these kind of things. Sprite Kit is for use for 2D games. So the original version of Mario, Pac-Man, these kind of things. And Reality Kit is more like if you want to create applications for where you are demoing some real world products like a furniture or something. So I'm going to use Scene Kit and Storyboard is fine. Let's go ahead and say Next. I'm going to just put it on Desktop. That's also fine. Now, if you don't edit any code, if you don't type or delete any code, it already has a lot of code already written for you. You can see there's a bunch of code written for you. And if you run the application right now, it's going to display a ship and a spaceship basically. So let me go ahead and run this. I'm going to go and select my phone. Now, my phone is running a little bit lower version, so I'm just going to drag it down to let's say 13.0. That should be okay. It doesn't really matter. We're not really using any new features of AR kit, so 13 for me, it's gonna work fine. And let's go ahead and run this. So I haven't really edited any code and I'm just gonna run it and see what happens, all right? The default code uses the scene kit scene, which is ship.scn, which is added in the project. And this will allow us to show us kind of like a spaceship. And this is where you're gonna look at a particular view in AR. So make sure that you are running the app on a physical device because if you're not running on a physical device, you won't be able to see anything. So make sure that you're running on physical device. Any device which is iPhone 6s or higher is going to work. I'm actually using it on iPhone 6s and you can see the spaceship is being displayed. That's great. We haven't written any line of code. This is just the base template that comes up and once we run this, this is what we're going to see. Pretty cool, right? Without writing any single line of code. Okay, so what exactly is going on in there? Well, the first thing you will note is that you have ARSCN view. What is all of that? And it is decorated as using IB outlet. So ARSCN view is the augmented reality scene kit view. And what it does is if you actually even look at the documentation over here, it's a for scene kit, which is right over here. So if you have a scene kit application, because we select the content technology to be scene kit, we are using AR SCN view so that the scene kit view, which is used for gaming or 3D games, to display into AR view. So if you go and check out our main.storyboard, you will note that this is using ARSCN view. So ARSCN view is the augmented reality scene kit view. Your scene kit views are then displayed in the ARSCN view, and that's how you actually see it through the camera. Then we set the delegate to self. That's some delegates that we can attach and we can get hold of different functions. Show statistics simply means that when we are running the application, we will be able to see some debug information or statistics like frame rates and things like that. Then we have a scene that we are creating. So what exactly is a scene? A scene, you can think of it like a movie scene. And in the scene, you can have different items. 
So if I open up the scene, which is in art.assets, this particular movie scene or a scene contains only one item, which is ship. All the items that you add to the scene are called nodes. And if you want to place anything into a scene like the spaceship, it has to be added as a node. This will be a SCN node, which we'll check it out later. But you can see that we have this scene and this scene has a particular spaceship added to it. I mean, you can add multiple things to the scene if you want to, that's perfectly fine. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to use a spaceship scene. I don't want to use spaceships. I'm just going to remove that part. So this means that if we load our scene, it's just going to be an empty scene, nothing to it. All the other code that we have right now, I'm just going to go ahead and remove it because we don't really need all of this stuff. And we are going to start from the very basic. So we are going to display a sphere, meaning a 3D circle, and we are going to decorate the circle with the picture or we're going to wrap it around an uh, image of the planet Earth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a function called add sphere to scene. This is our own custom function, which doesn't really exist right now. So I'm going to go ahead and create a private function and I will call it add sphere to scene. All right. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to create the geometry, the wireframe, the skeleton of the thing that we want to add to the scene. So sphere equals to, and you can see that there is something called SCN sphere. SCN stands for scene kit and sphere obviously means sphere that we are creating. Now, keep in mind that this is just the actual geometry that we are creating, which is SCN sphere. Geometry means this is more of like a wireframe. So if you look at your body, the geometry can be the bones. It doesn't have any flesh on it. So it's just a wireframe that we are creating the geometry. Now, sphere is obviously a circle, so it has to have a radius. Now, one of the important things to note over here is that whenever you're using scene kit in augmented reality, which we're doing, all the measurements are in meters. So if I say 0 0.3, that's 0 0.3 meters. Now, 0 0.3 meters is actually pretty big, so we're just going to use that. The next thing is the spear material, spear dot first material dot material. First material dot content, nope, diffuse dot contents. Now you can see there's a lot of stuff going on over here. So what exactly are we doing? Well, the material represent the actual coating that we want to do on the spear, kind of like your flesh, right? So your bones can be the actual geometry, the structure, the wireframe, and the material is the actual body, the muscles that you're gonna put on the, uh, on the bones. So the material over here is the one that we are using. And what do we want to put on there? Well, we are simply saying, go ahead and make sure that the actual sphere is color red. Okay, so we got that working, that's fine. Now we learned that in order to add anything to the scene, it has to be a node. So let's go ahead and create a node. I'm just gonna call it sphere node, SCN node. And you can see that one of the arguments that you can pass to SCN node is the actual geometry, which we already have, which is the sphere. Once we have the sphere node, we can actually add it to our current scene by saying scene view dot scene dot root node. So root node is always present. This is the root of your scene. So we can attach different nodes to the root node. And the different node that I'm gonna attach will be the sphere node. All right. So we got that. One of the things that you have to always specify, and it's a good idea to specify, is the position of the spear node. Where would the spear node appear? So spear node.position. And you'll see that the position is actually SCN, which is scene kit vector three. Vector three because we are working in three dimensions. So SCN vector three, and we have three dimensions, which is X, Y, and Z. So I don't care about the X, I don't care about the Y, I care about the Z. Z is the distance between you and the spear. 
and we want the sphere to be away from us. Away means 0 0.8 meters or minus something. So subtraction sign or minus something, it means that that particular position will be away from us. Okay. Let's go ahead and build our application. By the way, this property called contents or diffuse dot contents. So diffuse simply means that how the light is reflected off the material. So we're simply saying that the material that we'll be using and the, when the light reflects, it's gonna be a red material. One other thing that I like to add is the actual shadow. Scene view dot lighting. And we're gonna say auto enables default lighting equals to true. Default lighting simply means that the lighting will automatically be applied in the direction that we are looking. So it's not a perfect lighting, but it's better than having nothing. And you'll see the effect. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and run this and see how it actually looks like. So I'm gonna run it on my iPhone 6S, but you can obviously have a different iPhone, you can run it, but make sure that you run it on an actual physical device. And there we go. So this is our spear. Now you might not notice, but there is a little bit of light being displayed. So there are a bit of shadows that are going on in the spear. But the cool thing about the spear and using the scene kit is that you can decorate the spear with anything you want. Right now, we are just using the color red, but it doesn't have to be only color red. I mean, we can simply just coat it with anything we want. So I think it will be cool if we are displaying our planet Earth instead of the red color. Now I've already downloaded the planet Earth texture. If you simply go to Google and you search for planet Earth texture, you will come across this texture. It's a pretty heavy file, meaning it's, a, it's like around like 20 to 30 megabyte file, but it is very highly detailed as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use this particular image and we are going to wrap this image around our spear. So I'm gonna first drag and drop this image so that we can actually use it in our application. You can drag and drop into assets also if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. And the only thing that we need to change is instead of using this UI color red, we will be using an image. So UI image, and we are going to be assigning the image name property and we are simply going to be passing in earth.jpg. Let's go ahead and build that. All right, let's go ahead and run this and see that now if the image or if our sphere is decorated, is it wrapped around the earth image or not. And there we go. It looks actually very beautiful, right? It looks very, very beautiful. I can go around it. I'm sitting right now, so I can't really move that much, but you can see that I can move around it and it looks absolutely amazing. Right? Okay, now one cool thing that we can do with this is that we can add some animation to our spear so that it is, well, spinning. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create that animation and I will call this animation rotate action because animation in scene kit, you can run an action and action is kind of like an animation. SCN action dot, and you will see that one of the overloads, one of the static functions is on SCN action class is rotate by or rotate to. I'm just gonna use rotate by. And the values that you're providing over here are actually in radians. So I'm just gonna say over here, let's a small value, let's 0 0.25 and Z is zero and duration, let's say whatever, two seconds or so. Now, if I want to use this rotate action, I can simply go to the spear node. So a spear node dot run action. And then I want to run this action repeatedly or forever because hopefully our earth will be spinning forever. So SCN action dot, you can see that we have something called repeat forever action. And repeat forever action takes in another action that you want to repeat forever. So we're gonna simply pass in the rotate action. And that's it. Let's go ahead and run this. And now hopefully you'll be able to see that our earth 
is now rotating. Now it might not be rotating as the real Earth is rotating in that particular way, uh, direction, I guess, but you know, you can actually figure it out in a particular radiance that you want to rotate. But here we go. You can see that the Earth is actually rotating and it is rotating also forever because we are using the repeat forever action. Pretty cool, right? And there you have it. So this was more of a very small introduction to augmented reality using AR kit. Now, one of the things that I like to mention is that I am actually speaking at a tri Swift World Conference. This conference will be online and there are a lot of amazing speakers. You can see Daniel Steinberg is there. I'm also speaking over there. So my speaking engagement is tomorrow from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Now the seating is actually very, very limited. So if you want to attend and you want to learn more about AR kit and augmented reality, then this will be a great session to attend because I'm not only going to cover the things that we learned right now, but I'm going to cover how you can add a custom model, how you can have physics properties, uh, collisions, and all those kind of fun stuff that, uh, that, that makes augmented reality just an amazing, amazing thing, all right? So there are a lot of other sessions. I would say go and check it out that which session that you want to enroll. And this is definitely going to help out our community also. If you want to learn more about augmented reality, then I actually have a very famous popular course, which is Mastering AR Kit for iOS. This is close to 16 hours of the course and it covers many different scenarios like building a remote control car, integrating AR kit with Core ML, and implementing portal using AR kit. So it just goes on and on forever. I mean, this is just an amazing course if you want to take a deep dive into augmented reality. Now, the best way, again, to get the course is to check out the description, the YouTube description, and you will be able to find a link that will go to this course. So please use the YouTube links that is really going to help me. Now, if you like the video, subscribe to it and please go ahead and press that like button that really helps grow the channel and let other people know about the channel. Thank you so much and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video.